Hi, my name is Aaron Leaton, and I'm here with the Unreal Dev Network answering a Facebook question that we actually had. Uh, the question was, how would you set up a UMG, rather, a UMG menu that would allow you to change your team and have that selection persist into another level? So let's say that you had a lobby and you had the ability to choose from red team or blue team, or some people might think it was red team and white team, and have that saved to a Boolean on your player, player controller and have that be able to be loaded in another map. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and do today is go to step one, and that's to set up the actual UMG itself. Now, I already have one right here, but what you can do is right click and go to user interface, and then click widget blueprint, like that. And then bam, you name it, and then you'll have one. Now, I already have two buttons here, but I'm going to delete these. We don't need that. And then I'm going to grab one right here, Make kind of big. And we're gonna make this one red, and then we're gonna copy it. And we're gonna go ahead and paste it. Four point seven allows you to do that, so that's kind of cool. Make this one blue, and then in my example, I want to go ahead and put the anchor in the middle, so that they will be pushed away from the middle, based on the resolution of the screen. So when we go to hit play. There, you see, I have two of them. Now, with mine, I went ahead and set up the loading of them in my level blueprint, like so. So I have my event begin play. I create team select widget, which is right here. And if you want to just know how to do that, you just go to create widget, like that, bam. And I went ahead and I promoted it to a variable. You don't have to do this. This is just if you want to reference it later. But, uh, I mean, in this instance, it's not really use useful at all. And then you want to add that to your viewport. And then that will actually allow you to see it on the screen. So you get that. Okay. Now, before we go any further here, what we want to do is go to our player controller. Now I set up one here somewhere. Bam. Mine's called test controller. It's conveniently named. And then I set a boolean here. Now this boolean we're not going to use just yet, but make sure that you have it in your player. Uh, controller or wherever you want to. I mean you can house it all in your game mode, you can house it in your pawns if you want to. I'm just using the controller as I think that's a, an ambiguous way to do this. Now, here's what we want to do. The first thing we want to do is create a function or a custom event I mean. And we're gonna call this uh, save my stuff please. If you're not polite it will corrupt. All right, now what we want to do is first we want to check and see if our save game exists. And hell, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's actually stop here and let's go back here. And the very first thing we need to do is go to New Blueprint and type in Save Game. And select. And then we're going to call this, uh, I don't know, something convenient. Let's see, Save, well, not Cave save my info BP okay now if you double click this we go ahead and we want to add a variable that we want to be saved and you can add any kind of variable that you want but here we're gonna put a boolean and we're gonna call it team and then we're done with this so here we close my save my info BP now what this does this allows us to actually save to this file and we can recall from it later so close that. All right. Now, we're good. Our next step is to say, does save game exist? Now, a slot name can be anything you want. I'm going to call mine taco just for the sake of proving that. And we're going to branch. And what this is saying is, does this game e exist on this slot name? If it does, we want to do something. If it doesn't, we don't. All right. So let's say that we do have it. If we do have it, we want to load the game from slot and the slot being taco. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now, if that works, we want to promote to variable. And the variable is going to be taco save. All right, looking good. Now, what this is doing is just, again, allowing us to reference this so we don't have to keep using the load game from slot. And then from there, we're gonna cast to save my info BP. 
remember that was the blueprint we created from the save game blueprint parent as you can see <coughs> right here all right now you go okay well if you have this and I want to save my stuff so I loaded my blueprint that has that allows me to save I want to go ahead and get my team actually no I don't want to get my team because I just want to set my team I'm trying to keep you guys on your feet all right so I want to set my team and when my team is set I want to go ahead and get my taco save here and I want to go ahead and say well that's that's great but let's go ahead and then save this game to slot now that I've actually made that change I want it to be saved and again it was called taco save remember oh nope I lied it was just called taco all right now right now all we will ever do is set this boy into false and save it and that does us no good so what we want to do is go to our custom event <clears throat> and go ahead and put in a new input this input will be team now for the sake of this tutorial I'm just gonna use a boolean you can use a name you can use a string you can use integers um, however you wanna set up your team assignment that's up to you but for now we're, we're gonna use a boolean Red will be false, blue will be true. Or, yeah, yeah, we'll keep it like that. That sounds good. Now, this section's done. What we want to do is actually go to here. If this game does not exist in this slot, we want to go ahead and create a save game object. And here we choose my save my info BP. So, again, that's the blueprint we set up to allow us to save. But here, we're able to reference it again. Now, we already have this right here that we set up here, this uh, save game variable. We want to go ahead and put it down here as well and assign it to this. Dang, that's easy. All right. So now we want to cast to it again, and that's the wrong one. Here we go. Oh, pressing buttons too quickly here. So we cast to it, and we want to set our team once more and then when that's done, we're going to copy this and paste it right there. And that's going to allow us to save all of this information right here, these two things. Now, this function right here, what we want is we want to go ahead and plug it into there and there. And that's going to allow us to go ahead and save it whenever we utilize it. Now, for the sake of testing, we want to go ahead and put some print strings here to make sure it did save. And what's really cool about this built-in function is that you can take this boolean and plug those in and it'll tell you if the file is successfully saved or not. So here we go, we'll put red for that one and then blue for that one. <coughs> this red's not really red, it's like an orange. Uh, it's still orange, whatever. Alright, so we got that. That's pretty awesome. So we go back to our team select and we click on the red button as I move it around and out of place look at me go and we do on clicked and put that there and you know what we should really name these so we got red team I already have that named so we'll do red and then we'll do blue and then here we'll bind so I don't know if you saw that but under event on clicked you just gotta click view Let's actually delete all these real quick. Let me do this again. So that one added the red one, and then when I click here, there's a little plus sign, and bam. Um, after you do that, you can just click it, and it'll take, uh, click it, and then click view, and then it'll take you to where you need to be. So when the red one is set, we want to go ahead and get our player controller. Now, assuming you're not using local multiplayer, the player controller zero will always be the person that's playing. And here we're going to cast. Uh, CSAT apparently is not the same thing. We're going to cast to our player controller. Okay. And then here we want to go ahead and use our save my stuff please function. We are asking quite nicely, so hopefully it'll work. Click that, and then there we go. Now, if you remember I said red would be false and blue would be true, so we'll go ahead and click that. That is going to tell it that when we cast to it, when this button is clicked, we're going to cast to our controller and we're going to go ahead and save our stuff. Now, 
let's go ahead and try this. I'm gonna compile that. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna wait. It's exciting. All right. Hit play, and then dang, we got this. Now, if you look, it looks like they're both true, which is good. Okay. Although the first one only happened once, and that is because we created it once. And then it was able to just load it each time. Now that's great, so we're saving it, but how the hell do we access it? Well, I got great news for you, it's gonna be really easy. I'm gonna delete this, because that was getting ahead of myself. So, again, what we do is, we do a does save game exist. Of the type, taco. Okay, now we're gonna branch, and we're gonna say, if it does exist, go ahead and load it for me. <coughs> taco, there we go. Now, we know that we have this taco save variable that we set up earlier, so we're gonna go and reuse it. No point in cluttering up our blueprint. And from here, we wanna go ahead and cast to our save my info blueprint, and say, all right, now give me your team, please. And it's like, you know what, man, I got you. Here's my team. So you plug this in, and then bam, we are good. <laughs> now the reason we do not use a false here is because we do not want to create a save game on construction here. We, I, mean, there's, I mean, you could, but in this instance, it's not going to work for us because we don't want it to work for us. And the other thing is we don't have to save at the end here because we're just loading it. Okay, so that's great, and then I actually have a key set up here, which is my Y, and go ahead and redo that so you can see. You type in Y, click this, and you say, go ahead and print a string for me, please. All right, and what string I want you to print is this team. I want to know whose team I'm on. <clears throat> so I'm going to save, and play, and I'm press Y, and I'm false, so I'm on the red team. So I'm going to click blue, I'm going to stop, I'm going to play, click blue, oh, it's true, Oh shit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this now. I'm gonna reopen it. <coughs> and then we're gonna sit here and wait for it to open. You know, we'll go through the marketplace while we wait. <coughs> oh, look at those nice pictures. And we are almost done. Do, 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 do. What it's doing is it's actually building suspense right now. You don't know if it's going to work. Now, if you remember, we clicked blue. So when I press Y, it should say true. Bam! Look at that. It's like magic. Now, we'll click false. Stop. Play. Press it. Oh, man. And that is all you need to set this up. If I go to a new map, I hit default, and I hit... Don't save because we don't need to save it there. We'll do our regular game mode with a test controller. I'm gonna click this, and when I put Y, if you look, it's false. It's pretty cool. And then we'll go back to uh, do this map here. Don't save. We'll play. Remember, I was false, so it means I was on the red team. We'll click blue, so now it should say true. New level. Default, don't save, play, and true. See? All right, so that's all you need to do. From there, you, you need to build, up, build the logic to have it load whenever the player actually gets into the game. Um, you can use it the same way I did it, but it may not work for your system, but that system will work if you make it work. All right, if you have any questions, go ahead and post on our Facebook thread. It's uh, the Unreal Dev Development Network. I will put a link on the bottom of this YouTube channel. All right. Thank you for your time.